welcome into this video. It is part three of my 12 part Photoshop tutorial on how I retouch images with a special emphasis on portraits and even within portraits, environmental portraits, these sort of on location portraits. If you missed parts one and two, you can check them out. They're probably here in the suggested videos in YouTube or they're over on my site, touchvid.com. Um, you can download this image as well. There's going to be a link down in the description where you can download this image and follow along with the tutorial. Um, and you should probably go back and, and do parts one and two so you know what's going on over here. Now, before we jump into this tutorial, I want to let you know I'm selling a course over on touchvid.com all about how I retouch images boom right there a link just appeared on this video you can check it out it supports the site super cool if you pick it up but if not hey we still got plenty of free tutorials for you um, now in this part three we're gonna be covering skin blemishes and specifically frequency separation now if you're not familiar with frequency separation you're in for a treat it's really mathematical and really sciencey I'm terrible at math and I'm terrible at science so I'm not going to really talk about that. I'm going to show you how it works and how you can make it work for you and what it does. So here's step one. Oh, and by the way, there's going to be actions that you can download as well uh, that will automatically do this, whether you have an 8-bit or a 16-bit image. There's two slightly different uh, ways we do this. But we're working with a 16-bit image today, so just hang with me, follow along. I'll, I'll let you know what's different. First thing you need to do is merge any visible layers to a new layer using the hotkey Command-Shift-Option and the letter E. If you're on Windows, that would be Control-Shift-Alt-E. All right, so we've got one layer, Command or Control J to duplicate that layer. All right, let's name our top layer high and our bottom layer low. We're going to shut off the high layer by hitting the little eyeball. We're working on the low layer. And all we want to do here, I'm actually going to zoom in on her face. We want to just blur her skin to the point where you can't really see the detail of her skin anymore. We don't want to completely obliterate every face, facial feature. So we're going to go Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And something about five for this image actually works really well. Uh, you can see if I take it up to like that, you know 65, that's ridiculous. Um, down around one, you can still see kind of a lot of detail in her skin. So something like five, I'm probably going to roll with that for this image. It's probably going to be different for your image because every image, you know, not every image is the same size, and also the skin area in your image may be larger or smaller. So just look at it. The key thing that you're looking for is you want to remove detail. The low layer is going to deliver color and sort of brightness values. The high layer is where we're going to be storing all of our detail. So you're looking to erase detail on the low layer, but not, you know, obliterate every ounce of detail either. Go ahead and hit OK, and it's going to just blur that low layer. Turn on the high layer again. Select the high layer. Important that we select the high layer, and we're going to go Image, Apply Image. Now, here in Apply Image, there's a couple things we want to do. Uh, you're probably seeing the Multiply Blending Mode and something sort of like this. Well, it's probably looking to apply to a merged layer. So you're probably seeing something similar to this. The first thing we want to do, remember we have the high layer selected, we're looking to apply the high layer to the low layer, so we're going to choose to apply it to the low layer, that's first and foremost. Next, we're working with a 16-bit image, and here's where things are a little bit different. If we're working with an 8-bit image, what you want to do is set the blend mode to subtract, and you want to set the scale to 2, and the offset to 128. All right, that's the settings for an 8-bit image. If you are working with a 16-bit image like I am doing, uh, you want to tick on Invert, you want to set the Blend Mode to Add, and you want to leave the offset at zero. You can see it essentially looks the same. It looks like a high pass layer that we've applied over our image. And essentially that is what's happening, except the Apply Image is working with the low layer here to sort of choose the perfect uh, pixel radius for us instead of, you know, when you go into the high pass filter, you have to choose your own radius, yada, 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 yada. It's doing all that mathematical junk automatically for us and choosing the best of the best of the best, and it's giving that to us. Now, brief uh, interlude here. Why is there a difference between the 8 bit and the 16 bit image? Um, it has to do with finding like the perfect medium gray. It's a little bit different in a 16-bit image than an 8-bit image. There's a there's a, a very technical explanation to that question. Um, and instead of boring you with it, um, you can Google it. There's there's people that have written entire articles on it, but it's it's kind of above my pay grade. I'll be I'll I'll be entirely honest with you. All right, so we have our apply image here on our high layer. All right, and you can see we've got this layer with all these just very sharp edge details and a lot of this gray. And then on our low layer, it's just a lot of color. So how do we make these layers work together? Well, what we need to do is set the top layer to the blend mode linear light. And you can see here if I shut these two layers off, 
it looks like absolutely nothing's changed, and all we've done is set ourselves up to begin retouching with this frequency separation uh, technique. Now, the way that I like to do this is work with the healing brush on the high layer, and also I can work with the clone stamp tool or sometimes a, just a straight paintbrush on the low layer, or I'll create a layer in between. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Let's begin here with the high layer. Uh, I'm going to zoom in here on her face, and we'll begin working on this cheek. You can see there's a few little blemishes. Uh, I'm just looking to get rid of anything that's sort of her makeup didn't cover up um, and just you know anything that I think need that needs to be gotten rid of or cleaned up to make this a really really clean image we're gonna go a little over the top for the sake of demonstration all right I'm gonna work with the straight healing brush tool not the spot healing brush the healing brush tool and I want to choose to work on the current layer only not current and below just the current layer we're working simply on the high layer all right, so now we have a small brush. Oh, by the way, you probably want to crank the hardness up. I just find it works better when the hardness is all the way up. And then hold down the Alter Option key, choose what you want to sample, and just boom, start killing off little bits of uh, blemish, things that you really don't want in there. And I'm just using my Alter Option key almost continuously to keep picking up new sample points and make sure that I'm keeping the texture fresh and uh, everything looking pretty good. All right, I'm going to speed this up. I'm going to go through and knock out a bunch of these little blemishes. Don't worry, I'm not going to leave you hanging. If anything crazy comes up, I will jump out of the, the super speedy mode and uh, talk about it with you. Okay, so now once I've gotten rid of all of sort of the detail-oriented stuff, you can see the forehead still looks like a little bit of a mess. I really didn't go over it all that, that carefully, but we started working on it. Now, and you can see it really down here on her arm where there's still obvious blotches left after we've taken away the detail of those spots. What we now need to do is go down to the low layer and actually clone up and cover up uh, the colors, and we're actually going to use color here to kind of smooth out her forehead a little bit as well. Now, what you can do is you can either create a new layer here in between your low and high layer, or you can just work directly on the low layer. Um, in this case, just to save time, I'm just going to work directly on the low layer just to avoid any kind of confusion. Let's begin here with the arm. Uh, what we'll do is we'll grab the clone stamp tool here. The letter S is the hotkey for that. I am working with my opacity set to 100. Again, I'm just going to work on this current layer. And all I'm going to do here is look for these dark spots, opacity at 100% by the way, and also I'm probably going to keep the hardness all the way down for this, and uh, maybe boost the size of the brush, eh, around like 30 for this image I think will work pretty well, hold down my alter option key, sample that color, ooh that's way too much, alright we're going to reduce the opacity here to about 45-50%, let's go with something like that, just to really help blend that stuff together a little bit, right, just mix it in, cool, alright and we can go over any of these spots that definitely stick out a little bit, and we can just kind of clean them up, sort of flatten out uh, the colors there, make sure everything blends together nicely on, uh, on her arm. Right here on her wrist, there's a very obvious dark blotch, right? We can just help smooth that out a little bit, help smooth out these colors here around her wrist. Uh, we can do the same thing here. We can come up do, 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 here over on her elbow. I believe there was something that looks like a little bit of a flat spot there. Uh, I don't see much of anything there. There's a dark spot here on her neck. See if we can flatten that out, smooth, kind of smooth those tones together a little bit. All right, here on her chin, right, we got like a little bit of a red spot. Great. Over here, those colors could really use being smoothed out a little bit. Um, we're actually maybe, we might have to smooth these using the, the brush tool, but we, we'll get to that in a second. All right, let's come up here to her forehead. Uh, I'm going to begin by sampling here in the highlight area. Remember, we're working with the colors. All right, so I'm going to begin by sampling in the highlight area, make my brush a little bit bigger, and just try to paint sort of the colors of the highlight out a little bit, and then grab skin outside of the highlight area, and sort of extend that color, and just make an effort to kind of blend all of this together. You can see that that, that did a much, much better job of sort of beginning to blend all of this stuff together here. All right, we can select highlight. Typically, what I like to do is work with the highlight color, 
kind of paint and extend the highlight into the areas that aren't really highlighty, and then take area that is definitely not highlight and sort of paint it into the highlight area a little bit. It just tends to be a, a nice way to sort of help blend colors together uh, and certainly blend your skin tones and things of that nature together uh, pretty nicely as well. Um, now, the technique that I was talking about using the brush tool, I definitely like to do that up on a new layer. So this would be sort of, I'll just call this like color... Uh, flatten something like that. Uh, I'll put make the a layer there between the high and the low layer. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll grab the brush tool, it's letter B. Right click. Uh, hardness will be set to zero. Need to make a larger sized brush. Something like that is probably good. Uh, I'm going to open up my brush panel here. I'm going to turn off shape dynamics just so I know exactly where I'm painting. I'm using a Wacom tablet here, and I'm going to reduce the opacity of the brush tool to about 10%, 11%. That's fine. Holding on the Alter Option key, I can uh, sample colors. So I'm going to sample a light color here from the the uh, highlight on her skin. And by the way, here a little trick: if you bring up the eyedropper tool, we want to we don't want it set to point sample. I'd rather go with like an 11 by 11 or 31 by 31 average. This way, it's going to choose more of a general overall color from that area. All right, so go back to the brush tool and you alter option. Uh, those, those eyedropper tool uh, settings do apply to just that snap eyedropper that you bring up when you're using the brush tool. So again, sample the highlight color and we'll paint the highlight out a little bit. All right, and then sample an area that's definitely not the highlight and paint over the highlight a little bit. It's just going to help blend those colors together. We can do the same thing here on her face. So we select sort of this brighter area and we paint some of that into the shadow. Then we select the shadow area and paint that into the darkness. Uh, same thing down here on the chin. All right, brighten it up. And then we'll take some of this darker area, paint over the highlight a little. And it's just going to uh, flatten out and kind of smooth some of these tones together uh, a bit. We'll do the same thing here on her nose. Uh, let's go on a, a, each side of the nose with the highlight. And then just cut down the highlight just a little bit. Uh, all right, that's cool. And of course, we can do the same thing here on any other parts of the skin uh, that just don't quite look right. You can always go over it as much as you want, smooth and adjust your tones. But here we can see there's before frequency separation, there's after frequency separation. We've really flattened a lot of the skin. Maybe there's a couple little marks up in here that we still want to get rid of. But you can always go to your high layer, make uh, additional adjustments, use the healing brush as much as you want. And by the way, you're not just limited to the healing brush. You can use the patch tool. Uh, you can do all kinds of things. You can use a clone stamp tool. I just prefer the healing brush tool, um, but there's retouchers who do all kinds of amazing things with a, a whole a plethora of tools. And that's pretty much my skin retouching portion of the retouch. I like to set up my frequency separation layers. I'll go and I'll retouch details on the high layer to begin with. There's still some like highlighty areas that are bugging me up here. And then I go and I'll work with the colors on the low layer. And then I'll do additional color flatten. You can see what that color flatten layer is doing to her face. It's just helping smooth all those tones, bring everything together a little bit more. We can always uh, very targeted in a very targeted manner. We can add contrast where we want it. Oh, by the way, I should show you a quick trick with the high pass or the high uh, layer here in our frequency separation. You can really get some great sharpening by sharpening this layer. Now, we maybe don't want to do our sharpening right now, but just as like a side tip, just because I remembered it, check this out. You can go filter, sharpen, smart sharpen, and by the way, you could convert this layer to a, a smart object, and that way these would be smart filters. That'd be a nice little thing to do. All right, let's say we just apply this little bit of sharpening, okay? So we just went smart sharpen. I got 95 and 0 0.7 on the radius for that sharpen. It's going to apply a sharpen, and you can see that we've definitely added sharpness to our image. But check this out. Go with like a curves or a levels adjustment layer. I like curves. And I'm going to clip the curves adjustment layer to this high uh, portion of our frequency separation. You can see we got almost perfect 50% gray right through the middle of our histogram looking good. I can set this curves adjustment layer to something like soft light. And look at like that. Now it's way too sharp. Um, but you get this very um, almost chunky punch to the mid-tones of your image. You could reduce the opacity of this curves adjustment layer and just really control what part of your image gets sharpened that way. Or you can set this back to a blend mode of normal and you can play around with the curve here. Maybe darken this a little bit. Boost the darks like this. All right. Also boost the brights. Okay. Something like so. Maybe we want to bring this, I don't know, bring this in to about here. We want to boost the darks just a touch more. And a touch more here. Something like so. And you can see there's before, there's after. So we really enrich those tones. We really bring out some crazy sharpness uh, just by clipping a curves adjustment layer to our high layer 
in our frequency separation as well. So frequency separation has a t there's just so much you can do with it, and it's it's incredible from working with the colors to flattening out colors, throwing a layer in between like that, uh, working on just the blemishes and the details of your image, and sharpening just the details in your image, and then even clipping adjustment layers to just the details portion of your image, and either working with blend modes on them, or as you saw there, I was just kind of boosting and tweaking the highlight and shadow sort of ratio in that high uh, portion of our frequency separation to really just kind of tweak the sharpness. I'm going to undo all of that before we go on to the next part. In fact, I'll just delete. Uh, well, you know what? I'll undo it a couple times just to step back and back and back and back. And there we go. We should be back to where we were with no sharpness on our frequency separation. So for frequency separation in Photoshop, I know it was a little long-winded at times, but it's such a powerful and such a deep uh, technique in Photoshop, it's really important that you know how to use it, and it is super useful when it comes to portrait retouching especially, and even within portrait retouching, all the skin stuff that we just did. So, for frequency separation, for removing blemishes, and for messing around with the color and detail and sharpness and everything that comes with frequency separation, and might I add, for the free frequency separation action download that you can find in the description of this video, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodds and Tutvid.com I'll catch you in the next one. You see, most of my days I'm a happy, happy man, but there's some days that I'm just not. And one of the things that does cheer me up is when people hit that like button. And you might say, look at this guy, he's pandering for likes. And I am, I am pandering for likes. And while I'm at it, you should also subscribe to this channel and sign up for my newsletter over on tutvid.com. I got a link right here in the video. I'll send you 30 free tips on how to save some time in Photoshop. It's an amazing little guy. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, links are down in the description. So go ahead, hit the like button, make me smile.